Hello there. I'm Mike Abel of Council of Esquire and thought I would chat with you a little bit today. With all the coronavirus and everything going on, decide to self-isolate up here in our cabin in Pine, Arizona. So just using some time to sit back this weekend and contemplate what's next in the world. And a lot of my clients have been contacting me just with that same thing. They're concerned what's going to happen in this world with everything going crazy, stock markets shutting down or, or slowing down, going wildly in different directions, their own businesses laying off employees, they're laid off. You know, they're looking at it and saying, Mike, you know, what am I going to do when things do get better? You know, I'm a firm believer that they will, but when, none of our guesses right now seem to be worth anything. But with that, I, I, I do consider it because we need to have some plans. And what they'll ask me most commonly is, what, what, what am I gonna do with my assets? My assets I spent all my life you know, building. You know, are my creditors gonna take them all? Am I gonna have to liquidate everything to stay afloat? And a lot of cases I tell them, yes, you are. Unless you've properly prepared, you're gonna have to liquidate quite a bit. You see, and that's one thing that you need to do in advance, and hopefully a lot of you have. If not, you need to give us a call because we need to have a talk. You know, with that, you know, I commonly preach to my clients that they have to have an asset protection plan in place, you know, before anything like this occurs. They want to make sure that all their businesses are owned in its own separate business entity. You know, if they have rental properties, that they're all owned in separate entities. You know, same thing with any type of living venture or active venture. You want to make sure it's in their own separate business entity. And the same thing with your passive. You know, I teach people all the time about what is an active asset versus a passive asset. An active asset is one that creates liability through its use. So you consider your car, it's an active asset. You could run somebody over your business. You know, anything that creates liability is an active asset and should be in its separate LLC. Um, that's speaking in America, at least. Uh, in other countries, we use limiteds, we use all sorts of things. And you have passive assets. A passive asset, think of it as your bank account, your investment account. Those two should be owned in their separate business entities. I advise my clients never own anything in your personal name. It's too easy to get. So because of that, we do planning to make sure that you don't own anything. And for God's sakes, don't trail everything back to your own name. Use privacy jurisdictions and stuff. So there's a lot of things we have to consider. You know, you look at people that buy cars into their business entities. That's a bad idea in most cases. And the reason why it is, is I saw too many workers drive their cars home over the weekend, get into car accidents, and then all of a sudden the business is on the hook for everything. So you've got to watch what you're doing. In the U.S. here, we really have to look at the jurisdictions, and we do actually worldwide have to look at the jurisdiction we're forming an entity in or a trust to make certain that we can hopefully take advantage of their laws. In the U.S., it's harder because some states will not honor other states' laws. So we have to look at where the person lives to do that. Um, so you know, these are just part of the plannings that you really need to get done if you haven't done them already. Another thing is the people that already have their own business. I've been doing a lot of corporate governance work right now because I find that so many people, they do their business planning, they form a business, they're actively operating, and then somebody gets hurt, somebody sues them. And the first thing I ask is, hey, can you give me your corporate records? And they just look at me don't understand what I'm asking for. Any type of business entity requires a business filing and paperwork. Corporations, for example, here in the States, not only do you have to file a corporation, you have to have bylaws, you have meeting minutes, you have to have election of directors, officers. All these things have to be done and they have to be documented. And if you don't have them in your corporate books, well then you don't have a company. At least it's no protection for you whatsoever. The same things happen with LLCs. You know, some state laws say you don't need what's called an operating agreement. I tell you, you're crazy. It's been used too many times to pierce the corporate veil. I will never have a company that doesn't have the corporate governance documents that, you're out, that are out there. In addition, do you have yearly resolutions, yearly meeting minutes, um, filings? Most jurisdictions or many jurisdictions require yearly filings. 
I don't know how many times I've helped clients who come into me and say, Mike, I need to get something done. And I look at the basic governing body and find out that their company's been dissolved three, four, five, ten years ago. Uh, they've been operating all this time without a corporation or a company in place. And we have to go through a process, very expensive, to go ahead and go back and redo everything. The same thing if you have a director or a sh an officer or manager. Every time you change one, you need to have a resolution documenting that change. If you don't, you become a plaintiff's attorney dream. I mean, we can go ahead and pierce the corporate veil and take all your assets, and that's not good. Once we have all that done and in place for you, then we look at death and figure out how we avoid paying as much tax as we can or get it to your loved ones the best way possible. Now, it's a lot to take in, a lot to discuss, but it's something you really need to consider during this time. And if you don't have everything in place, you really need to contact us. I mean, we do work all over the world, and we really try to pair up if we don't form entities or do things in certain jurisdictions with attorneys and tax practitioners there who do. We want to make sure things are done right the first time. So during this time, the only thing I can tell you is keep safe, keep healthy. And if you need any help, you know, give us a call. Send us a line. We'd be glad to talk to you. Have a great day.